Cannonball Big Bell Stone Series. This is the 25th anniversary edition with elaborate hand engraving, semi-precious stones, and a nickel silver neck. What does all this add up to? Let's find out. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone masterclasses and product reviews, please do subscribe and be sure to hit the like button and you'll be my little semi-precious stone. Now today we're talking about the Cannonball Big Bell Stone Series. This is the 25th anniversary edition. Now Cannonball is an American company that designed the saxophones in America. They're manufactured in Taiwan and they've been making saxophones for well, at least 25 years, given the name of this saxophone. Now, before we get into the review, and we'll talk about specs and price and do a playing test, I need to give a big thanks to the Moore Music Company, my local music retailer. They have generously loaned me this horn. I did not buy it. They did not give it to me. I have to give it back. I promise I'll give it back, Al. Uh, they're my local music retailer that I've dealt with for many years. They do stock, and they are a Cannonball dealer. I'm not an affiliate. I do not take commission sales. I make no money on this in any way, shape, or form. But they're my local music store. And as all of us, we should be supporting our local music stores. So if you don't have a Cannonball dealer near you or you can't get a hold of the 25th anniversary edition, I'll put a link to my store down below. And they've assured me that any pro horn that goes out the door will be looked at by my personal repair technician, Evan. So give them a call if you're in the market. Now, the first thing you'll notice about the horn is simply the way it looks. It is a black nickel plating, and it is a deep black that actually really does look different than other black plated horns I've seen. And up close, it is striking. And we've got a big contrast with the nickel silver neck, which actually has some gold accents. And of course, the snakeskin jasper semi-precious stones mined in Australia. And you have to think, those miners in Australia have to fight giant spiders and crocodiles. So think of what they went through to give you these precious stones. Now, admittedly, my first impression on seeing this was kind of, I didn't know how the whole aesthetic fit together. We've got the deep black, we've got the snakeskin jasper, we've got the sterling silver, but I wasn't sure it all tied together with the flow of the saxophone. Normally, when you see a silver neck, unlike a uh, King Silver Sonic or some of the Yanagasawas, we have silver and then also carry it over to the bell. So overall, as a whole, I'm not sure it worked, but then I spent some time with it. So holding it and playing it, I really do kind of appreciate the stones. As to their acoustic benefit, I don't know and I don't care, but they do look really beautiful and they feel really nice under the fingers. The neck has some really nice detail and I almost didn't notice it, but when I turned over the bell, I was thinking, wow, there is a huge white tiger engraved on the bell, hand engraved, and it's really pretty striking. So while it may lack the overall coherence in design, individually the details kind of add up to something that feels like something special. It feels like they pulled out all the stops and wanted this to be a truly limited edition, something that you would want to collect. It feels very nice to hold and look up at close, and every time I look at it I notice new little details. I just can't think of a better word other than it feels kind of special. Now other interesting features, it does have titanium, Next, screws. Now, don't make any mistake in thinking this is a heavy mass screw that has acoustic properties. Titanium, as we all know from science class, has uh, less mass than brass or many other metals. Titanium is special because of its strength, lightness, and durability. And I will say it feels very good under the fingers. Feels like it can really kind of close that gap securely, probably without fear of that breaking. Now, like all the Big Bell Stone series, this has all the features you would expect from a Pro saxophone. It's got a high quality leather pad. These are Pisani, which is water resistant, uh, blue needled springs, which actually gives it a very good action. It feels solid and secure. It's not quite as snappy as my Yamaha or my Yanagasawa, but it's consistent and predictable. No complaints about it. Obviously it has a high F sharp key as well. So good attention to detail, quality parts. How does it play? Well, interestingly enough, Cannibal attracts a lot of modern and R&B players. That's simply just not what I do. So when I played it, I simply sounded like me. Thank you. 
another interesting feature of the Big Bell Stone series, not just the 25th anniversary edition, but all the Big Bell Stone series, is they come with two necks, which do sound and feel a little bit different. You've got the normal neck and actually an underslung neck. Now, what's interesting is don't confuse this with a just underslung mechanism like from Yanagasawa or the Old Kings, where it's just the mechanism, but the octave pip, the octave hole is still on top. The cannonball, they're fat neck, as they call it, they actually put the entire octave tubing on the underside of the neck, not only just the mechanism. And that really does change the way it feels when you put air through the instrument. Now, other things contributing to the sound, it is a ribbed construction, meaning we have metal plates that run along the side that the posts are stuck to. It makes it more durable, but adds weight. We also have a double arm on the low keys, which actually give them a very reliable, stable snap, and also in theory should keep them in regulation for longer. But these things obviously add up to weight, and that's a concern. Also, the big bell. It's all adding together to make this a chonky boy. It is a heavy saxophone, but I'm very happy to report, unlike some other heavy saxophones, this doesn't feel sluggish or stuffy like some other heavy instruments I've played. The response feels very good. With just a little bit of air, you get a very nice response. <laughs> Now let's talk about the monolith in the room, the case. Honestly, I think several thousand years from now, after the fall of civilization, there'll be a new race of scavenger people that will find one of these cannonball cases in the desert and start to worship it as a deity. It is striking, big and glossy black, but also very heavy. I was actually talking to a retired musician that said he used to be a saxophone player like me, but took a cannonball case to the knee. So if you could get past the weight, it actually is a well-made case and rather luxurious. The horn does fit snugly. It feels like it would be good protection. There's a dedicated space for both of the necks. It comes with accessories like a neck strap and chapstick, polishing cloth, some kind of pouch, and a nice folder, which actually has a some product info cards, and actually the card that features the signature of whoever hand engraved your saxophone. And kudos to Amanda Hauser. This is really well done. So let's talk about price, and that's one of the interesting things about Cannonball saxophones. You can't buy them online. Anyone who is a dealer is not allowed to not only sell them online, they can't list the prices online. I can tell you what I could have paid for this because I'm an individual and I can walk into a music store and report that to you, but there is no map or minimum advertised pricing agreed to by the different retailers and the manufacturer. So if you buy a Yamaha, you'll notice the prices online are all pretty similar because they have to agree to Yamaha's map minimum advertised pricing. These are going to vary depending on which dealer you go to. At my local dealer, which is the only one I can speak to, it was $3,949, so under $4,000.
Now, at that price, I feel it's quite reasonable for a professional saxophone, especially something with this many features and attention to detail. It puts it in striking distance of some Yamahas, so it's actually cheaper than the Yamaha 875 or the Yamaha 82Z, a little bit more expensive than the Yamaha 62 latest version. So if you've got $4,000 to spend on a professional saxophone, is this a good option? I think it completely depends on whether you like the aesthetics. If you like the way this looks, it plays very well. I would not bat an eye if this were my everyday horn. It was very comfortable. The intonation is good. I like the tone. I like the goodies. The one downside I will say is that the big bell, I'm not a fan of, not because of the weight or the sound, but because of finding an aftermarket case. Because of the big bell, this won't fit in a lot of my favorite aftermarket cases, including BAM, which is what I personally use. I'm not a BAM sponsor or affiliate. I just really like their cases. This won't fit. So you're really limited in the aftermarket cases uh, to basically the larger size ProTech. ProTechs are fine. I don't love them. I don't hate them. My friend Brian at GetASax.com kind of calls them the fanny packs of saxophone cases. This seems to be a good description. They're perfectly serviceable, but... I just don't love them. Other than that, I don't see any big drawbacks to this horn. And frankly, I've had a lot of fun playing it. So if you need help finding one of these, you can call my friends at More Music down below. They are a Cannonball dealer. Uh, if you have any questions about this, leave them in the comments. Or if you've owned a Cannonball saxophone, let me know your experience in the comments below. I'll be back next week with some fun learning saxophone video content. Until then, go practice.